of our reason for the delay was uh, we're doing some taping here as well as video, and we have some issues with the mic, but it sounds like the mic is working out really well, uh, great right now. Um, again, welcome and thank you for coming out. Uh, my name is John Feuerbach from the city's Department of Neighborhood Development. Um, I want to welcome you on behalf of a, a bunch of people. One, um, the mayor, uh, Sheila Dillon, chief and director of d and is here. Um, the BPDA, and equally important, the Project Re Review Committee for the Plan Dudley sites here. Um, as folks might are, are aware, the Roxbury Strategic Master Plan Oversight Committee has a Project Review Committee for the sites that we're going to be talking about today. Um, two sites that are um, in the square here, 135 Dudley, a.k.a. the B2 site, and 75-81 um, Dudley. Um, the PRC is working with BPDA and DND &D to review, analyze, and make recommendations on the site. So before I go any further, I just want to recognize some of the PRC members who are here with us. We have Norm Stembridge. We have Rodney Singleton. We have Art Gordon. We have Fred Fairfield, we have Valida uh, Britton, we have Bridget Wallace, we have Sophia Transmar, we have Hussein Ali, and we have Brian Keith. Okay, um, I just want to emphasize the partnership that both uh, DND and BPDA has with this PRC. We're working in a collaborative manner to um, advance the public engagement for the Plan Dudley process, and this being w one step. So um, there's a couple things I just want to um, say. I, I mentioned uh, Sheila is here. We also have Donald Wright, f a deputy director for DND. Uh, we have Jamie Smith who's helping out. We have uh, Joe Backer here at the controls helping out. We have Jonathan Spillane um, working to welcome. For BT BPDA, I, know we, I saw Devin Quirk is here. Um, Muggsy is here. Uh, and I, I believe Victoria may be here, but if not, I, I want to welcome her. We also have a representative from Councillor Janey's office. I just want to recognize. Thank you very much. A um, couple things. If you haven't signed in, please sign in outside. Um, it's an important way for us to keep in touch with you as we go forward, part of the, pu uh, the public engagement. We want to uh, give out really timely notices. So one way we can do that is by doing emails. So there's a sign in. There's also an agenda. The agenda has uh, got a, a run through of what we're going to do today. And the flip side of that agenda has a map showing, showing the sites. Um, because we're trying to promote as much public in engagement as possible, and we might not be able to get every comment down today, we have a public comment period. We, we uh, outline that in the agenda, but we have comment sheets out on the, the sign-in sheet. So if you're interested in giving us a comment and, and leaving with us today, we have a comment sheet. Um, so technology hopefully is our friend today. We have two things going on by way of technology. City Cable is providing audio and visual. We've been requested to do this so that um, we can establish a record of this. So we'll be putting it on D&D's public website so if folks you know, you might have a slow day tomorrow. You, you want to go home and look at some highlights of a team. It will be available on our site. Um, so that'll, that'll be really good. But uh, second is, um, well, actually, be, be before I go further, we have some constraints because of that. One being, I can't move that much. We have a, 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 um, a camera that's focused here and the microphone that's focused right here. So. Um, we have to bear that in mind. So developers who are making their presentations are going to be right here. The teams are going to be in the back, but the, the focus has to be, it has to be right. Um, when we get to the comment and question period, we have two options. I was told that you can form a line and make your question right here. We can see how that works, but we can also, I could, I'll be the moderator. I could recognize someone. I could hear that question or comment, and I could pose it here on the, on the mic in the interest of time, so we can see how that works out. Um, so the second is we have an award-winning uh, documentarian, a documentary filmmaker, Fred Wiseman, who is over here. He's working with the city to sort of chronicle 
and capture the way the city works. And this, he asked us the other day, is, could he make a, um, make a presence here to film? So Fred is going to be here. That's probably the last time you're going to hear of him or see of him. He blends in very well. Um, so that's really great. Um, so in terms of the agenda, um, let me, I'm going to get to the beef, a brief background and process. But the, the main objective really is to allow developers who applied for the two sites present their plans, but then have a moment where audience members, residents can comment and question on that. We'll, we'll, we'll work through that. Um, so we have, a, it'll be a 15 minute presentation period followed by a 15 minute comment and a, a, qu a question period. And we didn't do it by flip of the coin, we did it by alphabetically. So um, the first uh, site would be 135 Dudley Street. That'd be Cruise Development, then New Westra, a Teacher's Place, and then Trinity Financial. We'll have a short pause between all of those periods to allow for some adjustments on the PowerPoint, but hopefully we'll be able to move pretty quickly. And then we'll close with 75-81 Dudley Street. Uh, there was one applicant, Madison Park Development Corporation. Um, before we go to the presentation, just a quick summary. Um, I'll call, I don't know if Brian or someone from the, 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 the project review committee or the master plan committee want to do a quick holiday, because this, this is my moment where I was going to do a, a one minute history of the process. So if there's someone who wants to come in, come up and while I'm talking, that'd be, that'd be great. We're, we're talking probably a three or four year public process. Um, yeah, it was organized by BPDA, DND, Roxbury Strategic Master Plan Oversight Committee. We did open houses, we did walking tours, charrettes, uh, visioning. And the goal was really to work with residents and businesses to determine what would be the most appropriate uses for these key public parcels in, in Dudley. So we're talking about 135 Dudley Street, 7581 um, Dudley. Next week, we're going to be talking about 2447 Washington, 40-50 Warren, and there's other sites. Um, a number of meetings that dealt with um, what would be the, the appropriate use for these sites. Folks talked about housing, retail, uh, the importance of arts and cultural, um, entertainment for the base of the buildings. Um, let's promote small business growth. Um, there was a lot of emphasis on civic open space. Um, we talked about affordability, um, green building and sustainability. These ca those came out in the community meetings and they were reflected in a request for a proposal that was issued uh, in mid of 2018 and they were due in November of, of 2018. So what we're doing right here right now is making the developers who applied for these two sites give them an opportunity to make their presentation. As I mentioned, it's part of our public engagement process. It's part of our review process. When I say public engagement, um, we've, we've got boards that have been uh, in the bowling building uh, since last week. So folks, if they want to see the boards and get a little more familiar with the plans, they're available. Um, I mentioned that D&D has a website. Everyone, if you were to look at your, your agenda, you can see the links. So if, if you want to go to those websites, links, you can see the request for proposals. You can see the applications. Um, today and next week, it's part of our public engagement. We're reaching out to residents to get comments. Um, last but not least, we have the comment sheet and the, and the comment uh, period. So um, Brian, I don't know if you wanted to. Sure. It's Brian Keith, who's a, a PRC member. Good morning, everyone. My name is Brian Keith, a uh, resident uh, here in Roxbury as well as a member of the PRC. We've got nine PRC members here today, so we've got a very good representation. Um, for anyone who was uh, participated in the Plan Dudley process, I think a lot of us here did. We know that it wasn't a perfect process, and as we go through the development, we'll, we'll recognize that they're not perfect, but what we'll also recognize is that they are good for Dudley Square and good for Roxbury. So I think the way we should approach it is how we can take what we view as the best project for the area and how we can shape that project into what's going to be the best project for us and how we can mold it, whether, you know, we, whether the project that we see is the best requires more affordability, less affordability, whether it needs uh, additional homeownership units or less, um, whether it needs more parking, less parking. 
Um, so let's, when we look at it, let's look at it from that lens and how we can improve the projects. But thank you very much, and I look forward to hearing from all the presenters, all the developers. Thank you, Brian. Also, um, while we were talking, um, Councillor Janey came in, so I just wanted to recognize her and say thank you for working with us and being supportive. I, I think that's pretty much it for the introductions. Everyone knows bathrooms on the outside, right around the corner. Um, boards are on the outside, so if you want to spread, you know, spread out and stretch your legs, feel free to go outside. Um, before we move on, then why don't we um, uh, call on the cruise team, um, the cruise development, and just full disclosure: what I, I did outreach to each of the applicants prior to this meeting, and I said all applicants can be in this meeting, but you can only speak when you are referring to your proposal. So for example, the cruise team is coming up now. They can only speak on their proposal. They can sit down and listen to Nuestra, Teacher's Place, uh, Trinity to Financial, but they cannot um, participate in any engagement or any a team member. They also have been told that they have a 15 minute period to do their comment. And you're looking at the person who's gonna be the timekeeper. So I've, I ap apologize in advance for being the, the jerk, but in the interest of keeping things moving, um, they're, all, they're all aware of that. So I wanna introduce um, a cruise development and we're referring to 135 Dudley Street. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for having us. Uh, my name is Justin Cruz on behalf of Cruz Companies. Um, on behalf of my father, John Cruz, who unfortunately couldn't make it to the presentation. Uh, Cruz Companies is a third generation black owned firm and we're celebrating our 70th year. Uh, very proud of that. John and I to carry on our grandfather, my grandfather's legacy, John Bertie Cruz Jr. And, and I'd like to introduce Dan Cruz Jr., the Vice President of Cruz Development to take us through the presentation. Thank you. That doesn't count against my time, John. <laughs> Good morning. Again, my name is Dan Cruz, Jr., and I'm with Cruz Development Corporation in Roxbury. Uh, Cruz Development is part of the family of Cruz Companies, which includes a development company that over the years has developed over 2,200 units of mixed income housing. We're a construction company. We are so proud to just have celebrated our, our 70th year in business. Um, and during that period, we've done over a half a billion dollars in construction projects. Cruise Management Company um, manages 1,400 units of mixed income housing, um, both for our own account and for, for, for third party owners. Cruise Relocation has successfully relocated over 1,700 units, uh, temporarily moving families out of their homes so we could rehabilitate them and then moving them back to construction completion. We truly appreciate the opportunity to present our plan to redevelop 135 Dudley Street, and we're gonna tell you why we're the best team to choose. First, it starts with our company. In the last seven years, we've generated approximately $30 million in payroll. Of that, 85% has gone to people of color. 65% has gone to people from this community. We believe that real estate is twofold. It's just not building new buildings, but it's economically empowering those impacted by your development, and that's a priority for us. As far as workers, on the last $135 million of construction, we've achieved 85% minority workers. In fact, there was an article in the Boston Globe a couple, three years ago, where we were the number one company in the city uh, doing minority utilization. MBE utilization, for us it's just not construction subcontractors, but it's also the professional services, the lawyers, the accountants, um, the architects. C consistently on every job we do, we achieve 75% MBE utilization, and we do it across the board. Um, we, we mentor you through a company called Cruise Cares, which is, uh, it's a nonprofit. We do scholarships, we do backpack giveaways, we do field trips, we do ski trips. It's just a way to interact with the youth that live in our development. We contribute to local charities. 
La in the last seven years, we've contributed over $600,000 uh, to the NAACP, Urban League, and, and uh, a host of charities. We've put together a very capable and experienced team of which the developer is a 100 percent minority firm. The contractor is a 100 percent minority firm. The property manager is a 100 percent minority. The architect is a joint venture between the architectural team, a, a very well respected architectural firm, and Michael Washington Architects who have been in business for over 40 years. Uh, the legal team, we don't typically hire a big Boston law firm. There's nothing wrong with that. But what we do is we break the legal up so we can get as many lawyers of color as possible in a transaction. Dennis Tours is our lead counsel. Bill Parker is our environmental counsel. Darley Davis is our title counsel. And that's the way we handle it. Big firms are fine, but that's not what we do. One thing you'll see that's not on our team is a diversity consultant, because we don't need it. For us, it's like, hiring a guide to find your way home. Mm -hmm. If you're doing business in this community, you should know how to access firms of color. You shouldn't have to hire someone to do it for you. As far as the development goals, uh, when we saw them, we were ecstatic because they're consistent with the way that we approach uh, real estate development. Economic development, we've committed on this project that at minimum, 60% of all business opportunities will go to firms of color. 15% will go to women. 60% of all the jobs will go to p workers of color. 60% will go to Boston residents. Affordable housing. 66% of our units are affordable. We have opportunities for people starting at 30% of the median income, which means at $22,000, you can rent an apartment for $600. We have for sale opportunities. Starting at 52,000 annual salary, you can buy a unit for 151,000. So 66 of our units, or 100 of the 150, are affordable to people between 30 and 80 percent of the median income. We've hired a local broker because what the, the, the uh, diversity without displacement is important for us. And the way we do that is we advertise opportunities in the community. We hired a local broker, J.L. Williams, who was born and raised in this community. I live in this community. I've lived here for 30 years. He grew up with my daughters. And so he knows um, how to access the potential uh, folks that will utilize this development. As I said, 66% of the units are affordable. Community benefits. We're partnering with the NAACP um, to occupy space in our building. When I was a kid, and I'm not going to tell you how long ago that was, the NAACP had a visible presence on Mass Ave. They're a pillar of this community. Now they're at Washington Park Mall. We think they should be prevalent again. We will provide them office space for 10 years at no cost. We'll also um, endow a scholarship in the name of our founder, John D. Bertie Cruz, for $5,000 annually to be administered by the NAACP. Youth Build Boston. We all know Youth Build helps kids from the community. We've hired over the years 10 Youth Build graduates. We're going to commit to five more on this project, as well as giving them a $100,000 contribution. Economic development, community benefits, 150 to 200 construction jobs, permanent jobs. We'll have art space. We'll have retail space that we've discounted. 15% to try and ensure that we get startup firms, firms of color. And we'll have 120 parking spaces uh, for public use. And with that, I'm going to introduce our, our design team. My name is Alexander Donovan. I'm senior project manager at the architectural team. This is Jeff Sargis, project designer. Um, and we're partnered with Michael Washington Architects to help design and uh, administer construction for this project. Um, in terms of our firm background, um, the, the architectural team has been around for uh, almost 48 years. We're going on 40, just about 48 years. And 
Um, over the course of that time, we've, you know, we've worked all over the country, but a majority of our work has been in, in the Boston area. A lot of the work's been in these neighborhoods, Mattapan, Dorchester, Roxbury. Um, we've been very successful. We've partnered with uh, our clients like, like Cruz, um, New Oyster Comunidad, uh, you know, Madison Park. I've, you know, I've personally worked with a lot of these guys doing same kind of work that uh, you know, Cruz is proposing here. Um, in general, you know, the big picture we've done, almost 160,000 uh, between condos and apartments all over the place um, nationally. But you know, within that number, about 100,000 is in the Boston area. Um, you know, we specialize in residential construction, and one of the things that we um, really take to heart is that we're designing homes for people. It's more than just, you know, designing units or condos. You know, we, you know, we speak in terms of that when it comes to construction, but at the end of the day, one of the things we understand is that we're, you know, we're designing homes for people, whether it's workforce housing, affordable housing, market rate. Um, so, you know, I mean, there's a couple of slides here that just had some, some of our project experience, but if you want, I'll inter um, bring on Jeff Sargis to speak more about project specifics. The, the view of the existing site is oriented south. To the right is the police station. To the left, the library. And the green roof on the bottom left corner is Dudley Station. We began by isolating a green space next to the library. This space will be used for them to program. We then built up the massing of the site to create an active street wall. The circulation through the site was then analyzed, making sure connections through the streets, from the parks to the baseball field, from Dudley Station were all connected. The pedestrian circulation was converging towards the center of the site, so we wanted to create an outdoor courtyard. We then split the project into two buildings, so circulation can be maintained throughout the property. The massing was determined by matching heights of adjacent buildings, creating spaces, terraces, to overlook onto the parks, the new courtyard, and we took views up and down the street, so the massing of the building would match the neighborhood. It wouldn't overpower in any way. The materials we chose came from the neighborhood. Stone water tables are very common, brick, and there's a black metal structure that holds up the roof in Dudley Station, and we want to use that as the accent panels around windows and frames and whatnot. The ground floor plan, the building on the left has access on all sides for community and commercial spaces. The building on the right, the upper corner, is where traffic will enter a parking garage. We wanted to bring the traffic around and come through the back to keep <coughs> congestion off of Dudley Street. Uh, commercial on the corner and community. The center blue area is where we added townhouses because we wanted to have a more residential feel to the courtyard. We didn't want a nine to five courtyard. We wanted to maintain activity throughout. This is a typical floor plan consisting of one, two, and three bedroom apartments. This continues up through the floors, six stories on this building and eight on the building on the right. Total number of units is 150. This is the typical floor plan of the parking garage. It is two stories below grade with 270 parking spaces. 150 would be for residential, the rest for the community. This is our view from Dudley Station. When you leave the station, we didn't want to create a wall effect, so we have the buildings positioned in a way that it layers and opens up to the courtyard, so you don't have an imposing view. It's welcoming in, so you can travel and way fine through. When you drive up through Malcolm X Boulevard, you come to this important intersection. The buildings are uh, turned, so you have this opening gesture which welcomes you to the area. Towards the back, you can see the courthouse peeking through, and that gives a layering effect to the site and also wayfinding. Uh, from Dudley Street, as you walk through, you see how we have continued different heights of adjacent buildings to match, and we've continued the active street wall with commercial uh, properties. The, here is our view down this down the street, we, we 
built the massing of this project by analyzing different heights and creating terraces to match the different areas. So you can see this is illustrated. The police station, that height is uh, matched and associated. The library and new construction up the street. So we have this matching of our, our uh, building with the neighborhood, its heights to make sure it's appropriate in scale and massing. Uh, thank you, Jeff and Al. Uh, so that's our, our proposal. Again, it's 150 units. Uh, it's 270 uh, below grade parking spaces. And our commitment is to economically leave the community better than we find it. We're just not going to build buildings. We're going to build people. And what you should do is look at the track record of people who propose redeveloping this site. You'll see from our inception some 71 years ago, we consistently achieve inclusion and employment opportunities and business opportunities for people in this community. There's a wealth gap, as we all know. It's $278,000 for majority folks, $750 for black folks. We've got to close that gap. The way you close it is with economic opportunities, hiring people, giving back to the community. We've all ridden around seeing construction jobs with New Hampshire plates and people working there. You say, where are they from? I've never seen them before. And the dollar doesn't stay in the community. We're going to give you an excellent project. But on top of that, we're going to give you jobs and business opportunities. And again, we're number one at doing that. Thank you very much. Extra credit to the cruise team, Third, 15 minutes, really nice. <laughs> a couple things, one we're asked to uh, reduce the lights, unfortunately that's an issue because of the cameras, so we're gonna be dealing with this, I apologize for that. And also in my haste to get to the presentations, I forgot to emphasize a couple points that were em emphasized in the request for proposal, what we're trying to push, and that being diversity and inclusion in both minority and, and women-owned businesses involved in the development, as well as jobs. Um, as well as when I talked about housing, I, I neglected to mention the RFPs talked about rental housing and um, home ownership housing and mixed income on both of that. So I just wanted to add that. So right now we have a, a question and comment period, 15 minutes. There's a couple ways we can do it. We could have someone walk up here or else I could recognize people and in the interest of time I could rephrase either the question or comment. Great. Thank you. So, okay. Okay. So I think it's prime uh, this is uh, in part to for folks who maybe didn't hear that but also for folks who are viewing at home kicking back and watching this at home. Um, this was a comment directed to Cruz and it was from a veteran talking about the, the support they have for Cruz and also there was an emphasis on jobs and the history that Cruz has in job creation. Here, it, it'll take a sec. Come on up here then. For folks who are up front, it'd probably be best to come up here, but for folks who are in the back, it's to take a minute. Why don't you? Uh, my name is Chris Grant. I am a resident of Roxbury. I've been here for 20 years. I brought my kids up here. I'm actually neighbors with Danny. They're great neighbors. Um, just to put, put that out there. And 
And I also own a business down Dudley called Black Market. We opened this market for the purpose of black economic development. And what we've noticed is the disappearance of black businesses in Dudley. My question is how many retail spaces you guys have, what's the sizes of them, and can you guys provide um, affordable condo rental retail units? No, not rental, but retail units. Um, thank you, Chris. Uh, we have approximately 8,500 square feet of, of retail space. We've designed it so we can break it up into different sizes. Um, we are uh, targeting a restaurant, so we've built in the 50-unit building a ground floor space that has a patio uh, access, so we can get a restaurant tour who in the summertime they can use patio space. So we, we have designed it for that. But other than that, we're flexible. We want to try to get as many local startup businesses as possible. Um, we've discounted, as I said, the square footage cost of the space. Typically, it can be $40, $45 a square foot. We've reduced it by about 15% and we'll work with potential retailers uh, to reduce it even more. But uh, there'll be opportunities, obviously, for rent. It'll be local. We're not condominiumizing the space. Um, but the leases will be very favorable. And again, we understand as a business in this community the need to generate more businesses in this community. Question or comment? Yes. It'll just take you a second. You're close enough. representing the leadership forum and I just want to talk about leadership because I think it's critically important to our community I was born and raised in Roxbury before there was a Malcolm X Boulevard before there was a MLK Boulevard before any of that and I just want everybody in this room to understand what leadership really means we have a company in cruise company that started out years ago through Papa Cruz, everybody knows Papa Cruz. And I want, you to t I want to tell you the standards this company set on their own, not through prodding by any government entity or any community organization, on their own went forward and created economic development opportunities for folk who wanted to work and for folk who wanted to do business. And I'm encouraging everybody in this room to please consider Cruise Company as the company that you select to do this development project. Thank, Thank you. you. Nicely done. Very brief comment. Excellent. <laughs> in, the, in the back. No, right here. Yes, with the hat. <coughs> Come on up front. issues that we have as far as residency, how many will be like <coughs> offered through Section 8, you know, Boston Howard Metropolitan, and also the businesses that are already here, like I'm 53, I've been coming here since I was 14. Dunkin' Donuts, you go on Dunkin' Donuts, they know what I want. <laughs> <laughs> go on the chicken place, he knows exactly what I want. And to nail, you know, what's going to happen with those existing, you know, because our thoughts in the community is that they're going to raise the rents, they can't afford it, and they're going to put in high-end stores. Mm -hmm. So that's the biggest issues. Thank you. Luis. Come on up. My name is Luis Galicia, and I work for Galaxy Cloud Nation Special Services. Luis, folks at home can't hear you. Yeah. Yeah, p part of exactly. We're the Garrison Trotter yeah. people here. Yeah, um, we've had 41 years of history of working with the Garrison Trotter neighborhood, but all of Roxbury. I'm coming up here first as a former president of the uh, Boston branch NACP, and it might be uh, pandering, but I appreciate the fact that you want to put the NACP back in Roxbury in a permanent spot. I utilized that building on Mass Avenue in Columbus for a number of years, and we used it to open up the city of Boston. We sued the city to change the housing process so that public housing was available to everybody in every part of this city. So thank you very much for making that commitment. I hope that the other developers will think of something civic-minded in that way also. I also want to say that 
the importance of a project of this nature is very critical to me as former representative for this community working with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and environmental affairs in different places. I worked with Makia when she was running the minority business program for the state. I worked in environmental affairs, and I can tell you that the challenge that we did not meet when they were doing the Third Harbor Tunnel, a lot of major projects in the city, now has an opportunity to be realized because a lot of development is coming to, to Roxbury. We spent $22 billion developing the South Boston waterfront, and I know that for a fact. We're spending $6 billion right now in North End. I'm just saying that I'm hopeful that all the developers coming up here will take in consideration that now is an opportunity for this neighborhood to receive a part of the process and opportunities that's available. So the question I'm asking Cruz is whether or not he will also consider reaching out to Madison Park Vocational Technical High School, a school that represents a real opportunity for young men and women in our community to take a part of the development that's going to take place in Roxbury, and would they consider bringing them in like they're doing with Bill Wright, Bill Wright, whatever it is, and the other groups, because that makes a big difference to me. Thank you. Thank you, Lewis. Listen, we've always been a big fan of Madison Park uh, and the technical school. We, s we do our own carpentry work and our own labor work. And so those men and women have to be trained. We used to send them to Madison Park. We were devastated when they closed that program. Um, we, we met with the principal. We met with administrators from the city trying to convince them why we need that kind of training facility in this, in this city, in this neighborhood. We now have to send our apprentices to Franklin, Mass. So it means they have to leave the job at 2 o'clock, which no one likes because <laughs> we got to pay them till 4 but they leave at 2 o'clock to hike a three-hour drive in traffic to go to Franklin Mass. That's unconscionable. Madison Park should be open doing training in the construction trades as a trade school. That, that's just, that's a given. Oh, we would definitely work with them. In fact, John was, John was part of Madison Park and believe he was on the board of the technical school. I mean, it's something he spoke there. I mean, it's something that we're really committed to because we're carpenters. That's how we learn the trade, is going to trade school. You have to have that in the community. Sorry, John. Comment, question? Extra minute. Hi, folks. I'm Charles Cofield. I represent the um, New England Regional Council of Carpenters. And uh, uh, first off, to the crews team, would never, ever uh, come here and, and have anything bad to say about uh, John B. Cruz and his company. We know that the uh, minority participation in the city for all the building going on is very important, but part partnerships are as well. We know that the, um, the uh, Linux uh, project that uh, is going on uh, presently that we're partnering up with John Cruz and he's, he has one of our uh, signatory contractors in on that job. But we also know that the, uh, the apprenticeship programs and the opportunities that we provide at 750 Dorchester Ave in Millbury, Mass, uh, provide, we, we pr we're, we're providing opportunities for long lasting careers in uh, the carpentry trade. We know that the um, uh, I believe it's the Gould Center that you guys have the, uh, the apprenticeship program. If we're putting more emphasis on Madison Park and not taking our training programs outside the city, that would be a better thing. We, we are providing um, training right here in uh, Dorchester at our main facility on Dorchester Ave, 750 Dorchester Ave. And uh, we have union carpenters that are teaching and um, uh, on the board at Madison Park High School. We need to sit down at a round table and get Madison Park back on the site. The program is not shut down. The program needs help to bring it back up to the standard that we're all used to and need in this community. Thank you. We have approximately three or four minutes. If it's a comment or a question. Seeing none. Okay. Um, I could repeat your question if you want. Go ahead. Or else you can come up. Yeah. 
Charles. So the question is uh, directed um, from Joyce to Charles as a union representative. Would, they, would the union be involved with Madison Park and bringing them back, back up? The Carp Carpenters <coughs> Union has a direct partnership <coughs> with Madison Park right now. So we are, we are directly involved with bringing it back up to the standards that, that uh, we need here in, in Roxbury. We don't have a timeline. We're trying to get more folks at the table to help us with that. We, we are directly involved with partnership with Madison Park to answer your question. Yes, yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yep. We're, we're, in it, we're in it right now. Yeah. And, and that's also something that we can discuss between presentations or even afterwards. Um, okay. Um, what? So, so the question directed to Cruz is what would their development and what would be the impact on the abutting businesses in, in Dudley Square? And this will be the last uh, question. Thank you. And, and I think it's a two-part answer. One is we're bringing people into Dudley. In order to support businesses, you have to create foot traffic. If you go through Dudley, Dudley is a driving destination. But you don't, all you have to do is, is, is you know, go walk through the community. You don't see a lot of people walking on foot. Our 150-unit development will bring people in who then can support the businesses there. The other thing that we're targeting is a non-conflict type of um, uh, outreach. I'm not saying there won't be any, but if there's a business already in Dudley, we're not going to try and mirror another business like that to compete with it because they're, they're fledgling and we want to be supportive. And I'm not going to say 100% it's not going to happen, but you won't see like, you know, check cashing stores or, or things, sub shops and things like that that are already here. Uh, you won't see that. Oh. <laughs> thank you. Um, I want to thank the, the crew's team right now and also want to thank folks here for being respectful of the 15-minute comment and question period. So we're now going to transition to the second of four presentations and we're going to ask uh, the crew's folks to um, leave that area. They can re remain in the room, but we're going to ask the Nuestra team to come up right now. It'll just take a, a minute to set up and we'll be on our way.